Welcome back. We're writing Little Man Computer in C++ and we've written the the computer and the little man and now what we want to do is to write uh, a simple assembler that will take uh, code in this sort of mnemonic form here and convert it to the to the sequence of numbers uh, that are required uh, for the little man to be able to do its job and uh, as you can see there are there are kind of four segments to to each instruction here the first is a, an optional label which uh, corresponds to the essentially the the, the line number that uh, the instructions are on as uh, or, or the, the, the box number that the instruction will be put in, uh, as each instruction is, is just a single um, memory location. The um, middle column here is the, the type of the instruction. Uh, the next column is uh, the, um, the variable uh, where uh, necessary. Uh, so for example here we're um, loading uh, into uh, the accumulator memory address 0 which is this this last line here. Here we're storing uh, the accumulator in uh, memory address result here and so on. Same for branching and, and, and what have you. And then the final column here is uh, optionally uh, a comment which uh, I guess potentially could also uh, occur on its own blank line. Um, so uh, we're going to kind of have to do this in, in, in two passes here. Uh, firstly we need to go through and uh, work out the box number for each of these labels such that we can then go and convert these uh, these pairs uh, into um, into the relevant number and we need to discard uh, any commentary that may also be on the line so let's, where are we? Let's just check we've not got anything hanging. Nope, we're all good. So we have a computer, we have a little man, we're going to need uh, a, an assembler, I guess we would call it. Uh, so if we go to our tests, uh, what we want to do here is add some, oh, that's interesting, the naming is a little bit uh, wonky there. Let's uh, fix that as well. So we've got computer tests, little man tests, now we've got assembler tests, which will be called assembler tests, I imagine. And then we need to go up here and have a quick check as to how we've been doing this. So we've just been creating uh, vectors of these sorts of things here. Good, so we'll do the same for assembler tests and we can do that down here. Or does that just sit in here? I imagine that just sits uh, like so. I should probably just have copy pasted that just to make sure I got it right. So if I just copy the first test just so we can correctly see the shape. Somewhere I've put it here, there. So we're looking like this. That's the assembler. And that 
should be fine, like so. We can delete that and we can delete the body. And I think we should be actually be able to run that. We will check. thinking about it. Excellent, so that's that's fine, that that passes. Uh, doesn't pass, well it, it runs without uh, issue, it doesn't pass because we haven't got any assertion for it to pass. So let's have a little think here. So uh, an assembler, we, we can kind of do this in, in the, 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 the sequence of steps are going to be something like we get this text uh, which will be uh, a series of lines. We then can break those lines into the, well, we can potentially do this in two steps as well. We can trim off any commentary and break those lines into three parts, uh, potentially, or two parts where the first part isn't relevant. And then we can take that set, that, that, that sequence of little groups of things, uh, a label, an instruction, and an address. And we can then convert that sequence into the relevant numbers. Well, we can do the, that in two parts as well. We can, we can go through that and replace these uh, addresses or create a lookup table. And then we can go through and replace uh, the, uh, we can uh, convert them into the relevant numbers. So, which half? There's kind of two. The two halves there. There's the the tokenizing, essentially, the breaking up of the the component parts of of the text, and then there's the taking that that tokenized version and converting it into the numbers. I have a feeling the second half of that is going to be uh, slightly more straightforward. Actually, maybe maybe this maybe it's better in three parts: breaking up the text, creating a lookup table for addresses, and then uh, and then converting the numbers. And I still think the final part part is slightly easier because then it will define uh, the structure that we, uh, or at least uh, more useful, because it will define the structure that we want for uh, the the information we need to create the. Uh, the numbers and also it will define the, the the API we would like to use for looking up addresses for things. So let's start off with a test uh, that I don't know the name of yet but we'll 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 start writing and see what we get. Uh, let's perhaps uh, invent so so let's what what assertion do we want for a start so, we're going to convert something into a number or a, a, a vector of numbers as that's what uh, we want to pass in the little man loading. Let us just double check that. If we oh, save that and have a look here. So to load the program, we need a vector of ints. So that's going to be our output. Here. So we want a vector of, of ints at that. Uh, the most simple thing we can do, I guess, is just to have a halt instruction. Now, do the, is the halt instruction explicit in here? Yes, it is. So we'll just have a, a plain halt instruction. So the assertion uh, that we're going to be looking for, uh, assert r equal. Uh, now we're going to run into this problem again of, of we wanting wanting to compare uh, vectors of things, which we we never really resolved before, and ended up with this kind of um, structure where we were looking at multiple things. So maybe through some refactoring, we'll get to a nicer API for comparing vectors. But for now, let's just write this out uh, explicitly. What we want to say is that if uh, zero is equal to our 
um, program element zero. Then, in fact, as we're only checking one thing here, what we can do is we can just do assert r equal uh, zero and program zero. That will do us for now, and then we'll we'll tease out the the relevant uh, API. So if we make that, we'll find out that we're missing a program. So we need a vector of int called program, which we want to be the result of. We want to be the result of our assembler. Dot uh, assemble. <laughs> is that is that going to be nice? Um, and that's going to take a list, uh, another vector of um, we can call instructions, something like that. Uh, that's going to have all sorts of things wrong with it. So we don't have an assembler, and we don't have any instructions. So we're going to need uh, also, hang on, let's also make that a little bit nicer. We're going to need an assembler called assembler, like so. And we're going to need a, a vector of, I guess we can create, create something called instruction. Uh, called instructions. That's going to need to contain an individual. Let's before we we set that up. Let's uh, take this step by step. So we have no instruction. We have no assembler. So now we're going to need to start creating things. So we need assembler.h as a place to put things. Let's do this, uh, namespace lmc, which will then uh, break other things. Does that have a semicolon on the end? I don't believe it does. And then we want uh, an instruction struct and an assembler class. Uh, the choice of struct and class here is somewhat arbitrary. Uh, this, the struct here, I'm just going to have that as uh, a set of publicly exposed fields, which feels more struct-like, and the class is actually going to do some things, so that feels more class-like. Uh, as I understand it, the only real difference in C++ is that class is private members by default, and struct is public members by default, and everything else is identical. So that's fine. And we will also need to... Uh, include it up here, and then we'll see what the next set of uh, errors may be. And yet again, I've lost my place. There we go. So if I make that, we now have no assemble method. That's fine. So that needs a public assemble method, which returns a vector of ints and takes a vector of instruction. which can be const as we're not modifying it, like so, Ooh, no, and we need to include vector. How does that then look? So what's our issue here? Uh, 
uh, have we, do we need to do a little something here? Is that going to be our issue? No member named assemble. No, oh, have I called it assembler? I have. <laughs> Does that get us uh, to the right place? And then there may well be some sort of um, implementation failure. Yep. So we then need a corresponding assembler.cpp which will include our assembler header and have assemble and <laughs> we get it wrong again and have assemble as a function that uh, method that takes a vector of instruction and returns a vector of int and that's const. Good. How does that uh, work? And then we're not going to have that uh, specified in our make file either, so that's still going to have a, a problem, which we will note in a second. There we go. So, no. So, edit our make file and our tests will now also depend on assembler.o. I have a suspicion there was some other issue with that line, uh, but we'll find out in a second. Out of line definition of a symbol. There's not much any declaration in the namespace LMC. So what's our problem here? That all looks uh, normal. So what's different here? We've got the right namespace. We have an assembler class. We have a public assemble method, method that looks OK. Oh, does that need to be assembler? Assemble. Let's just quickly open something else like computer.cpp. Yep, that's the problem. So now let's we'll see where we are. So we're not, we've got an unused parameter. Uh, that's fine. Which I can't remember the. That's wrong. What was it meant to be? Uh, let me dive into the Google. See if I can find out what I was supposed to be doing. There. Uh, maybe unused, yes. And that needs a return value, which will need to just be if I create a vector like so, no. Program. Does that get us back to, to something working? It's actually built the assembler. That's good. 
it's linked it correctly. Wonderful. So let's do that. So here we now have the component parts we need. We just need to make sure this instruction is set up correctly. So our instructions will have a single, I don't know, we can do something like that perhaps. Does, ah, that no, needs to be a vector of instructions. So how good is it at doing this sort of thing? I think we can just do that, can't we? And it'll shout at us for not having anything to put those in, but we can sort that out in a second. <laughs> a lovely uh, clear error message there, which I think we'll just uh, just guess at and do something along the lines of is it this a uh, string called uh, label a string called uh, Operator? Is that not a legal address? What do they call them in there? Uh, what do they call them in here? Mnemonic code instruction. Mnemonic code code maybe. And the final component's going to be address, I assume. So let's call that code and address, let's see if that's uh, okay, hello, what have we got here? Implicit instantiation of undefined template, that's quite horrible, isn't it? Have we used anything like that before? And uh, I don't think we've got any string fields and other things, have we? Are you going to have to create a constructor for this and do it. Um, a fields plus plus. Let us see what uh, this wants us to do. Oh, do we have to do that? Can we not be more? Uh, can we not be more precise than that? Let us uh, let us just see if this works. At least to give us an indication of where we're headed. That will maybe take us a step closer. Nope, that's not uh, that's not doing the right thing either. Hmm. Initialize a string object in a struct. So that's yes, this is kind of what we want to do. Yeah, that's uh, that looks plausible. So what have what have we done wrong here? So we should just be able to do that. So why can't we? strings anywhere else in our program. Um, don't think so. Let's is this a prefix wrong? 
Can't imagine that's the case. No. Yes, I did. I did mean std string. Instruction label code. So we don't need to do that. Uh, so that should be okay. Ah, is it because it's inside here? Because it's an inner thing. So if we were to just for fun do this, and then inside here have I one. This is not necessarily going to be our final answer, but at least it will give us an indication of where we're going. So that at least tells us that there's still an issue here when trying to create that. Are there any other alternatives? C++ structure initialization. Such a suggestion of equals as well there, but I didn't think that was a requirement. This feels like there's going to be some minor error here. So these are not, not quite not quite what I'm after. But they all look that kind of shape. Struct instruction. Oh, is this going to be something silly? Uh, is it that? That would be a careless error. And it doesn't seem to have resolved the problem, which is uh, helpful. Although I feel that should be should be a thing. Ah. So, implicit instantiation of undefined template. Let's uh, start to get a bit more uh, direct with this. If I just need string, that would be annoying. So, do I include it here? Hmm. That was a little careless. Let's uh, let's ignore that error and pretend it didn't happen. So, we're just about at the point now where we can get back to what we wanted to do uh, if we just put that there and get rid of that that will hopefully still work so now we have an instruction that's 
no label, an opcode, and an address that's blank, all as strings as they will have been brought in uh, from elsewhere. And we want to make sure that we return the program with just a zero. So let's check that. Ooh. A single halt instruction is translated to a single zero. Let's just check that that, that fails appropriately. No, it's seg faults. Interesting. I wonder why that is. I guess it, is that going to be because we're trying to pass back, trying to pass back the vector uh, in, incorrectly that was uh, internal. Create a vector in function and return. In C++. So they create a vector and they've returned the vector. So that's that's legal. So that's yeah. So I, I thought that would would work. So if we go to here, we've created our program vector and we've returned it. Ah, uh, no, we don't need to return a, a reference, we can return as is. Hmm. So what's the issue there? That is the correct type to return. Let's have another look at our error. So just sig faults. Ah, <laughs> yes, because we're then looking at element number one that is not there. So for now, we can just hard code the result. And hopefully we'll have a passing test. And indeed we do. Excellent. So. We've added a, a couple of new items there. And we need to update our git ignore to be all object files. Like so. Good. Get add. Excellent. Now they've all been added. Probably could have just done the git ignore in one step there, but that's that's fine. Uh, so we can commit those with uh, a message that says uh, assemble a single halt instruction. That's fine. Excellent. And uh, now we should be able to make a little bit more progress next time.